Um, oh, goodness. Uh, oh, the, uh, the title is um, Whence What and Whither seemed to uh, appeal to me. And then I got, so I looked at on Wikipedia, and of course that's a slippery slope. So the, the W, the wh words in English come from the Latin qu words, which come from Proto Indo European hard K words, I happen to know now. <laughs> okay, so defunds, just a, a recap, uh, are characterized by they are anonymous functions and operators. Um, you can name them, but that's uh, an optional thing. Uh, they have symbolic reference to their arguments, so they use alphas and omegas. Um, they like to make names local by default. Uh, they have lexical scoping rules, and I'll come to that uh, in a moment. Um, they have guards, that's a, a feature that uh, if you use defunds you will uh, soon come across. And shockingly they use recursion instead of iteration. Um, and when uh, I came across this I had the same kind of uh, feeling that uh, how can you write a computer program without iteration uh, that as a Fortran programmer, I'd had when somebody said you can write a program without a go-to. It was a, a shocking thing to hear, uh, but it turns out to be a good thing. Um, and the, an internal detail, to make this viable, um, it optimizes the recursion um, so that your uh, workspace doesn't blow. So that's, uh, that's defunds in a, what they are in a nutshell. Okay, so, so we, if we start with the um, journey uh, <coughs> to the present, um, I can date my interest uh, to September 1989 when the September edition of the British Computer Journal did a special edition on lazy functional languages. And it was the first, my first introduction to... Um, uh, functional programming, and I became hooked. And uh, to quote, it's appropriate to quote the Irish poet W. B. Yeats. I became sick with desire, um, and I read everything I could get my hands on about functional programming. There, were, there weren't that many books. I subscribed to the um, JFP, the Journal of Functional Programming. So I have about that wide uh, on my bookshelf at home. Journals and with all of these publications, they start off um, uh, amenable to the layman and they get more and more esoteric. So I kept up with it until I couldn't understand any of the articles in uh, the current ones, and then it, it kind of fizzled. So that's an exact uh, that's uh, when I became hooked. And in fact, I, I, I mean, it was uh, I wonder, I have to keep an eye on the time. Um, <coughs> Uh, I became, it, it was rather like a midlife crisis. I suppose I was, uh, what was I, that's a takeaway sum. I was just over 40 at the time. And it was almost like having an affair. Uh, APL had been my good, faithful partner for so many years. And then there was this flighty wonderfulness. Uh, um, and I tried to, I, my, I tried to do a, uh, I inquired about doing a part-time PhD, and uh, at that time, um, Glasgow University was a hotbed of uh, functional programming. Um, okay, oh, this, uh, uh, um, and I phoned up. Had you got any, um, uh, got any, uh, any part-time PhDs by, uh, in functional programming? And the the lady who answered the phone said, uh, "Hey, Phil, there's uh, somebody here inquiring." Uh, about FP, and they put me through to Dr. Philip Wadler, who is the Ive, well, that time was the Iverson of the, uh, and I'd read all of his stuff, and I stuttered a bit and said, I felt like a teenage girl who'd been suddenly connected to Michael Jackson, um, <coughs> which at the time worked as a, and he, he said he, that was the first time he'd ever been compared to Michael Jackson. <laughs> so, uh, 
in, in the event family pressures meant I couldn't pursue that. But uh, it was... Uh, uh, anyway, I like FP. So some of the, um, the, the FP's roots... Um, uh, it, it goes back a long way, but there's a... <clears throat> Uh, the Lambda Calculus, which uh, Alonzo Church uh, developed in the 1930s, it, a lot of the roots of FP go back to this. There's mathematics, which significantly predate computers. Um, there's a, there's a, a lot of FP languages are based on Lambda Calculus, and there's a nice quote from Church in his, uh, one of his papers that says, um, this... Uh, this mechanism may be of use for something other than as a uh, abstract logic, and he couldn't have been more right. He, uh, it, it's uh, Haskell is based on uh, this stuff. Um, there's a very good paper I recommend uh, in 1966 from Peter Landin, and it's called "The Next 700 Computer Languages," and he develops in there. He gives a language called ISIM, ISWIM, which stands for If You See What I Mean. Um, and it, that has a lot of the flavor of modern functional languages. Um, then there's a wonderful David Turner, uh, was the Arthur Whitney of the FP world. He developed a series of languages um, uh, culminating in Miranda, uh, which he then commercialized. You have, when you say Miranda, you have to say Miranda is a trademark of Software Research Limited. Um, uh, and um, so my introduction to FP was, uh, everything was, it was in Miranda, which is a precursor to Haskell. Um, in 1989, there was a journal of the British uh, Computer Society uh, edition, which turned me on. And um, 1990, Haskell, the first Haskell report appeared. Um, 1996, um, the uh, defense appeared in dialogue, and it was based on these uh, the, the ideas from Miranda and uh, uh, Lambda Calculus. Um, <clears throat> and I'd spent a year, I tinkered away in the background writing a paper in secret, um, and. Uh, um, the, I think, uh, Di, as Morton said, Diadic Systems indulged me by um, saying, well, okay, tinker with this stuff if you must. Um, I'll put it in. Um, now, I must, of course, mention Ken. Everything you do, it's like Einstein. Ken is, a, is an exception to all rules. Ken had been there before. So Ken, had, uh, Ken Iverson had made me, uh, several... Um, excursions into <clears throat> an equivalent direct definition, anonymous functions. Um, the alpha and omega had been in common usage as just a notation for left and right arguments, in uh, <clears throat> just in papers uh, as a shorthand for saying the left argument. So those things kind of uh, came naturally. So all of this, uh, none of this is original. It's all stolen from different uh, different sources. Um, as Newton said, I stand on the shoulders of giants. Uh, these people are very deep thinkers. Right, the implementation. Um, <clears throat> so, the, so the implementation was constrained. Um, it's very easy to... I always think a good question to ask is, hey, Orville and Wilbur, why didn't you use a jet engine? And um, <clears throat> it's because there wasn't one at the time, as they may have thought of that. Uh, <clears throat> so at the time, we had uh, pre-Unicode um, uh, quad AV, so we didn't, uh, we, we didn't have characters like alpha underbar, which we may have used. So we used um, digraphs, double alpha for uh, uh, left operand and double del for... Uh, a recur a reference to an operator, so that was the that was a scene. Um, it was built on. We had just implemented control structures. Jeff Streeter, I, who is there behind the lights somewhere, um, had implemented, had done the work prior to control structures. APL was strictly a line at a time, 
So the, the coding <coughs> just fell into the next line and there was a branch. The branch would switch lines. But with the advent of control structures, um, Jeff had to put in the token strings, linkages between the various items of the um, control. So if you have an if and then several lines and an else, then there had to be linkages in the token uh, in the byte code to, to represent that, to do the jumps. And uh, the defense would not have been possible without this. So it was built, it was built on that. Um, it was also built on top of Dialog's dynamic shadowing mechanism. So APL traditional functions, trad funds, use dynamic uh, localization, dynamic shadowing. Um, and it was appropriate with nested, uh, func lexically nested functions to have lexical scope rules. So initially, the, uh, for 20 years, the um, uh, Defund's lexical scope rules have been built on top of the existing dynamic shadowing mechanism. And it's, it's been a little bit clunky. There's more stuff going on uh, when functions call inward and uh, into and out of scopes than uh, <coughs> strictly necessary. But um, <coughs> partly it's all we had at the time. <coughs> and it, it was just the mindset that I was uh, brought up in. I, it didn't occur to me to think of another way. But we'll come to that. <coughs> Oh, the, the, um, uh, we called that, uh, all this stuff was nearly ready to go. We, we were ready to present it, ready to do it, and we hadn't got a name. We, we could see these things in curly braces. And we chose the name very quickly, and it was a, a we called them dynamic functions for not very good reasons. Um, and I sometimes think if uh, we'd called them something slicker, better, um, We'd have been driving, uh, you know, I've been driving here in a Rolls Royce rather than uh, coming on the bus. <coughs> um, so it was a very awkward name, and, and gradually we've, we've suggested that direct functions is a better. Some, I think, um, NARS 2000 may have called, people who tend to call them lambdas, um, but I'm a little iffy about that because I think lambda has quite a specific meaning. Uh, but uh, I, think, uh, I think other. Um, K may call them lambdas, the similar things. So that, <coughs> so I apologise. That was a, a big mistake. Okay, so that's the that's the background present. Um, okay, the, so what what what's happening at the moment um, is there's a um, I t my spare time hobby is to tinker with a workspace called defense.dws that I've been tinkering with for 20 years. <clears throat> and I, I edit it. People send in suggestions, things they've written. There's good utilities. And effectively, I edit that and collate it. And uh, um, <clears throat> it, it uh, keep it up to date, move it, to, uh, incorporate new features, new language features as they come. And it is three things. It is a utility library. So if you wanted an Easter date calculation, you can copy Defund's Easter to, to, uh, to bring that calculation in. It's, uh, got <coughs> um, it provides coding examples. And Google is your friend here. If you Google for dialogue space something, uh, like Easter, the, typically you'll get a hit to the notes page for one of these functions in the first two or three, um, two or three hits. Um, <coughs> and uh, so that's, uh, that tends to attract a fair amount of traffic uh, to us. And the third thing they do is that the def structure of the defense workspace is um, uh, it's primarily uh, uh, for each thing like the Easter function. There's a function, the code, a set of notes, which is ramblings and history and all sorts of things, and a test script. And so the test script, f f there's test scripts for all of the uh, D 
defunds are run every night as part of the QA for the interpreter. And I sometimes wish it had been called Z funds because if you get an error, it stops early on in the uh, overnights and people say oh, it's, uh, it's a defunds problem, give it to John to sort out. And often it turns out to be a problem with a, you know, something completely unrelated to defunds. But <coughs> I'm the first, uh, first line of attack with those things. But it's, a, it's quite a comprehensive test. I think a, a lot of, um, we, we catch a lot of uh, silliness with, uh, with that run. So, um, yes, I'm still inviting if you have some utilities. Ideally, if you can send them in a defund form with some notes and a uh, test, I, I would be uh, privileged to include them. Right, now, with the other thing we're doing at uh, um, present is Jay Fode showed me how to do lexical scoping properly. Um, <coughs> And I think it's the way that uh, uh, Scheme and other people do it with uh, static chains. And so Jay, Jay's the brains, and I've been beavering away typing. And re over the last month or so, re-implemented the lexical scope mechanism for version 18. And it's, uh, it's slicker and uh, simpler and uh, quicker than it was before, so that's a good thing. Um, and we're putting it not in the next, in the 17.1 release, but in 18, because um, uh, you, you know, we need it to work and uh, be, be pretty shaken down before it uh, gets. But currently there are no, it runs all of the defense QAs, it runs all of our overnight QAs. I've played with it pretty extensively and uh, I'm just, uh, I try to explain, my, well, we, we've just moved house into a little uh, new build holiday home or we, and uh, so the build was complete and now we've been um, snagging, when you have a new house you have snags and to uh, explain to Flora what I'm spending my time doing, I say I'm just de-snagging uh, the uh, defense work, you know, the defense work. Of the, so that's okay, she's, she's cool with that. <coughs> Because I told her I'd finished it, I made a big announcement. It's now complete. So when I shut my lid, she thought that was my lid shut forever. And uh, so next time I had to have a different story when I opened the lid again. <coughs> um, hey, it fixes bug 17. Um, bug, we, we, uh, we have a bug system. We number the bugs. We have a mantis bug, bug system and... Uh, we're now on 16,000 and something. Issues, we call them issues or opportunities. Um, so this opportunity 17 is about 20 years old, I think. And it was a difficulty with the lexical scoping mechanism. And it was quite an obscure case. It was if you did a lexically outward call to an operator, to an, uh, out, out through the nesting, and then that called back into an inner operand function, which in turn called another inner operand function. Um, it got a value error or something. So it's really obscure, except the first time Morton tried using multi-line defunds to do something, he ran into bug 17. So that, <coughs> that was a bit embarrassing. Anyway, it's fixed. It's bug 17 is fixed. Hey. I just need just desnagging as we stand, as we speak. Oh yes, and there was another bug that uh, Aaron Sue found, where um, uh, the uh, inner defense can mutate outer variables. You can do outer variable plus gets one or something, and. Uh, uh, he found that the, his mutations disappeared. Um, so that was another thing. And this, this re-implementation of the lexical scoping has uh, mopped that up. So there are currently known, known bugs with uh, lexical scoping. And as I say, it's simpler and quicker. Um, and that's, uh, that's where we are. Okay. Oh, no, there's more present. Oh, regrets. I have a few. 
Um, I, I should say this really, uh, if I could do it again, if you're going to do your own anonymous functions, here are a couple of things to think about. Um, right. <coughs> um, the, my, my, the pure functional programming world has, um, there's a nice quote that says, functional programs have no notion of the passing of time. They're just definitions. Um, <clears throat> whereas we were all brought up in the um, procedural programming mindset, it's very hard to shake where you do this, then do this to it, and develop data. You develop data through progressions. And my intention on stealing the ideas from functional programming was that a defen would be defined to be a result expression preceded by zero or more definitions used in that result. That's a functional definition of what a, a defen was intended to be. Um, <clears throat> and I banged on about this for years. And you've got to think more in a more declarative fashion. Try to get rid of the procedural. You know, swap your cartridge, reboot. Try and think in a declarative fashion. Yeah, 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 we're going to do that, John. Yeah, sure, right, yeah. Data gets data plus one, da di da di da So, and of course, um, when these, uh, when Defen started, it was very, we had to find people who were prepared to use them, so we were <coughs> had to make some concessions. So, if I were to start again, I would put a colourful error message out um, if uh, something like that happened. Because I think there's enough acceptance of the ideas now where we would probably get away with that. So, um, the, when, the, when we introduced these to the wider community, people couldn't get by without being able to assign names outside, non-local names. And there are all sorts of holes in the implementation and corners and creaky bits that people found to do that. And in the end, we standardised. We used to have an, e an email group, defunds at dialogue.com, where people swapped ideas. And the standard, this, this mechanism, if you do, OK, jot gets one, it gets past the um, scope rules, and it, uh, it makes an OK in the outer environment. And it was cool because it looks, it was cool for some reason, it's called Mike Day's Strange Device Excalibur. And uh, that's a misquotation of a Tennyson poem, I think. Um, but it's because the jot arrow looks a bit like a sword. Um, so that's Mike Day's Strange Device Excalibur, is a way of cheating the uh, system. So I, would I wouldn't allow that if I did it again. Um, and then the other thing is, um, a lot of uh, APL, of course, uh, it, it's not a pure functional language, it's a useful procedural language. So there are many ways to <coughs> achieve side effects. Um, and I think we just have to live with this it, to, to be useful. Um, we have to do that. But here's somebody, uh, here's you, you do something and just throw away the result in a strange variable and then you can, uh, uh, you, you can then use it. And then the final thing, the, the original definition of defunds was it's an expression preceded by definitions used in that expression. Um, but I didn't put the time into checking that you didn't put stuff after that expression. It just exits when it gets an expression. So you can put surplus lines after that expression. And I would probably disallow that if I uh, were to have my time again. I wonder if I, oh, no, I haven't got any more regrets. I, well, no. <clears throat> None easy enough to show here. So, future. So, this is some half-baked or less than half-baked or this comes with a Simonella warning, not even seen the inside of an oven ideas. Um, and they're not, you know, the views expressed here are not necessarily the views of the management. They're just uh, food for thought. So, a couple of ideas. Um, guarded guards is an idea. At the moment, you give uh, to the left of the colon in a defund, you give a predicate, a, a Boolean returning expression. And if that evaluates to true, it returns the expression. It evaluates the expression and returns it as a result. And actually, the first time I saw this in Miranda, 
I was gobsmacked that you didn't need to say return expression, that you didn't need a procedural, you just said two plus three, you didn't need to say, and I want to return this as a result. It, uh, it seemed magical, but that we've got used to that now. So there's a regular guard, but hey, you could have a guarded guard. So what this would mean is, uh, if P, then evaluate the rest, and if Q, evaluate the rest, otherwise it drops through. It would be like an and if, if P, and if Q, then expression, otherwise Go to the next line or diamond. Um, and, of course, as many as you like. And here's, an, here's a rather contrived example. So what this would say, if you didn't have complex numbers in your um, APL, you could say, uh, two residue quadiasis, is this array numeric? Um, and if they're all non-negative, then return the square root. Um, otherwise, give an error. So that's a guarded guard. So you c you can't do the test for non-negative unless you know you're dealing with a a number. So you've got to do that number test first. There are examples where that's useful. I contend. So that's one one crazy idea. These get crazier as they go. Um, Okay, where clauses. Um, so this is a way that the way defense look to me now is they kind of look procedural because you you see the definition, definition, do this, do this, do this, and you're very aware of the. If you use a tracer, it's clunking through um, <clears throat> the order, doing things in order. And as I said, functional, pure functional programs have no notion of the passing of time. So. <clears throat> To um, so what, what about this? Um, what the way to read this is <clears throat> um, average is some divided by none. We know that, <clears throat> and then you read the semicolon as where, where some <clears throat> is um, some of the items of omega, and num is the count, the tally of omega. So that kind of reverses the. Um, that reverses the thing, and it gives it a more, I, I suspect, uh, I suggest a more declarative feel. And it doesn't, con it doesn't conflict with anything we have at the moment. We could add something like this, because at the moment you can't have a semicolon at the top level between braces. So it doesn't, there is, there's no code at the moment, working code that looks like that. <clears throat> so that's a possibility. And it's top down. You can read it top down. As soon as you, if you're happy understanding what sum divided by num is, you need read no further. Top down programming, a good thing, some say. Um, and here's a, here's, a, here's a better example. This is Roger's quicksort. Um, so this has got a guard in it. This is if you've got uh, zero or one items in your quick sort. You're quick sorting a vector, sorting a, a vector. Um, if you have zero or one items, then you're done. <clears throat> Otherwise, the answer is just omega, QP, omega, and you're done. Easy. Oh, where Q is this train... And this is a kind of quick sort pattern that says sort, uh, <coughs> um, sort the lower valued items. What the quick sort is, is there's a, is a pivot in the middle and then preceded by the lower value items and preceded, post seeded by the uh, higher value items. So that's, that's just quick sort. But what's it? And where, so this is a. Did I? S no, I didn't say this. Sorry, I'm, I got out of sequence. These definitions are local to the preceding expression, and that's a, a nice thing. So the Q there is local to the omega QP omega, and the S definition is local to the Q definition. And the indentation shows you uh, 
the, the, where they're local to. It's called the offside rule, and that, was, uh, that appeared in um, Landin's 1966 uh, paper. That, that comes from there. And it's, you could, you, some languages just use indentation, but it's nice to use an explicit character because you could put them all on one line, then you're not obliged to use multiple lines. And then we say and where. So this definition is local to the omega QP omega. And there's a random pivot. So that's what uh, Roger's quicksort would look like in this style with local, uh, local names. And an interesting thing with this is um, what would a tracer do with this? Uh, Okay, <clears throat> all right, I'll go off on an old guy thing again. Um, I was saying earlier, um, we were at an Iverson College and Arthur showed us some K code um, which blew everybody away and there was a guy from Microsoft Research there from the Haskell group and I think he ran home afterwards and said, <laughs> you've got to see this, code. <clears throat> And they came and saw Arthur's code. <coughs> and then they have an annual meeting of the high priests of uh, functional programming up on a snowy mountain. Uh, I mean, these guys don't cast shadows when they walk. They are the, <laughs> the, they're the elite of the FP world. I don't think they use computers. They just think and maybe write on a piece of paper. That's enough. So they wanted Arthur... They couldn't get Arthur, so they settled for Roger. They couldn't get Roger, so I was their third choice. And, um, or maybe I didn't tell Roger because I was hell-bent on going to this, uh, this thing. So I spent, um, <clears throat> this is about tracing. I spent a week with these guys. I was completely overwhelmed. I was starstruck. I couldn't speak for the first two days. And eventually I had to get up and give a little demo of APL. And um, I, gave, I showed them the tracer tracing through things. And one of the guys said, they were all professors except me. And I, everybody had a chair. I had to stand up at dinner. <laughs> um, one of the guys, when I showed them Tracy, he said, um, I wish we had a stack trace. But he said it in a way that made me feel dirty. It, it wasn't, I don't know, it, it was a kind of uh, put down. So, I don't know. I, I, I think you, one would need a different... Maybe what you would do with this is to highlight a line <coughs> and its evaluation would pop up. Um, okay. uh, <coughs> so, uh, that, that's a to be decided. That's the details. Okay, but it's a, a suggestion for style. Now, here's a really, uh, really crazy, and I don't expect this to meet with... Oh, no, sorry, there's one more in here. Yes, this, this would also work for tacit form. That, that's how you would <coughs> type it in a, as a tacit uh, definition in a session. And you'd have to put the semi on the end of the... If you were typing this in a session, semi on the end to stop it evaluating. Uh, uh, so it would work for tacit functions as well. And you pronounce the semi where. <coughs> right. Optional type specification. Boo. Um... Here's a, I have found that when I'm writing non-trivial defunds, uh, it helps me if I can put in my inner functions, <clears throat> just say what kind of things they're expecting, or what kind of things they return. And um, I started doing that as a comment in English on the line, you know, at the beginning of the thing, and I found that's a bit distracting. So I've... Uh, I'm not sure I've evolved, and a notation has evolved un under my fingers to uh, help me with this. It's really kind of private, informal notation. This is not complete, but what I'd like is if people discuss whether APL could do with a type, optional type notation, and if so, what it might look like. This is not it. It doesn't work. It doesn't quite work. But it shows you some of the things. So, for example, um, <coughs> here it is a depth first search operator. And here is its type in a type notation. <coughs> and what we can see from this is that if you read that, 
The thing in the middle is a double del, so, which says this is an operator. And if you go to the extreme right, it says it takes a thing of type T and it returns, and it, on the left, it takes a thing of type A and returns a thing of type A. <coughs> so on the extreme left, there's A gets A, blah, blah, blah. And then the two operand functions of the operator. The left one is a function, a single del, and it takes a T on the right and an A on the left and returns an A. And the right operand <coughs> um, takes an A on, is a function takes an A on the left, a T on the right, and it returns a bunch of T's, a vector of T's. So that's kind of enough for me to give me a hint about how to use this, what kind of things it's expecting. <coughs> and it looks like a formal notation, but it is, it is incomplete. Um, but this is the kind of thing that I've found useful. And I guess what I should do now... Oh yes, type, so type variables, are you, there are many systems for type variables, these are general variables. Um, I've used A to Z for these, but you could use alpha to omega or... Miranda used a series of stars, first type variable was star, next type variable was star, 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 and it, it got by with that. Um, I think what I want to do now is just show you an example, so I'll take my life in my hands and... Uh, Switch to, yeah, so this is, an, this is quite a large DFAN, as we say in England, what I wrote. And um, the, uh, I've put some definitions at the middle. So uh, here, there's, maybe I can big it up a bit. Um, the, this is my own notation. So the, um, I've, used, so the, I've used a double colon as a, as a type. So the, it's called joy. <coughs> a joy is of type... Uh, this is a shorthand for a character vector. Um, so it, it takes a character vector and returns a character vector, and that's its thing. And then these colon equals are internal um, types, definitions of types. So within this program, I have to use a thing called a state and a dictionary. So a REPL is something that takes, is a function. Could you be able to do this? A function that takes a dictionary in a state and returns a state. And uh, a dictionary is a vector of names and a vector of OSECs. And uh, uh, what do we got here? A list is either an, a list of omegas is either a, a jot or an omega, a pair of an omega and a list of omega, and so on and so on. Um, and then the base type, there are some base types here with, uh, as I say, qu uh, quote quad is a, shorthand for a character vector. And then, in the body of the code, <coughs> having declared those types, um, let's find an interesting one. Um, <coughs> so, so, for example, this, um, this function called top list um, takes a vector of words and returns a pair. It's a monadic function and returns a list and a word as a pair, and so on. <coughs> so I have found this handy when I'm doing this. Here's something that takes character vector and returns an O sec and uh, uh, this is a, a slightly interesting one. This is a more of an algebra. This says um, if I were to combine a pattern type with an operator and an operator an upper type it would uh, <coughs> uh, return a, it would be equivalent to an upper type. So I can put expressions on the left. Anyway that's, uh, that's an example of it in in use. I have found that handy. Now let's let's see if this works. Will it please work? Yeah. Yeah, so what you need at the bottom of this is some primitive types. So and being APL it's nice to have them as uh, um, uh, squiggles. So I've I've just chosen the APL has three types, has numbers, characters and refs. So I've used these. I'm, no, I'm not particularly interested or clever enough in knowing internal data types, um, bit, you know, 32 bits and floats and decfs and things. But for me, the usefulness is uh, user-defined types. That's a different problem. And a, a full-type system would need to do that. And constructors, so, so we have arrow means result, del means function, double del means operator. Um, this means vector, but... It's probably got to be extended to mean higher rank arrays as well. 
Um, so that's that's that. Uh, let me just say. Oh yeah, and it, and the other thing is type inference. Uh, if one were to put the double colon after an expression, you'd like to the type to be inferred. So what this is saying, what's the type of this defen? And it says it uh, takes a num takes two numbers and returns a number. Um, there are multiple types in APL, so <coughs> uh, unlike the purer languages, we can return all sorts of different types. So this says it can return uh, a number, um, a, an anything, or a null, a void. So it's a work in progress. Oh, primitive types, what's the type of less than? It uh, takes a number and a number and returns a number. And then, as I showed you, you, one can define one's own type. So a date would, could be defined to be three numbers. And then the, the days function is a how many days since the epoch takes a date, uh, a monadic function, and returns a number. Right, so the, just to summarize this, um, this is a, is a convenience for reading code. It, doesn't automatically make your code go faster. Uh, it wouldn't do. Um, it's hard to d make a notation that um, is simple and flexible and rigorous. And it has a nice default progression. The thing about APL is you can teach a six-year-old to do her maths homework in APL in 30 seconds. You type 2 plus 3, hit return. You don't have to... Um, learn a lot of stuff before you can get going, and that's that. One would need a nice, easy things are easy to specify. It needs a bigger, more radical idea than my stuff. It it creaks. So, uh, if you think it's a good idea, think of it. Thank you. <laughs>